Those who joined the various Sith orders that formed over the millennia believed that their kind wielded the ultimate power in the universe. Thus, they claimed that only the strongest were fit to join them, as in the mind of a Sith, only the strongest could rule. Based on this, you might think that the Sith would discriminate heavily in their recruiting practices, at least more than the Jedi would. Of course, you would be right. The Sith were quite selective in their recruitment and they chose their recruits based on a variety of factors, including based on species. In this video, we're going to be talking about those species that didn't make the cut for one reason or another, and why they weren't fit for the dark side. Attention, Sergeant on deck! Firstly, we've got a brief clarification to make. We're going to be disregarding simple speciesism in this video. Speciesism was a definite factor in Sith recruiting, but it varied depending on the Sith. For example, the lords of the original Sith Empire only recruited Sith purebloods, and in a single case, humans. While there were many humanocentrist Sith lords who only recruited humans and viewed all non-human species as inferior. How they reconciled that with their order's origins as an alien cult is a mystery, but we digress. Instead of picking apart the biases of the various Sith orders, we're going to be focusing purely on which species just weren't as cut out for the dark side as some others were, like we did in our video on Jedi recruitment. Specifically, we're going to be talking about the standards of Darth Bane's order of the Sith Lords in particular as other Sith Orders differed wildly in their standards for various reasons. Exar Kun's Brotherhood of the Sith, for example, almost exclusively recruited from Jedi ranks, while the new Sith would accept literally anyone who was edgy enough and could hold a lightsaber. We're going with Bane's standard for two reasons. Firstly, the Baneite Sith were the purest expression of what the Sith as an ideology were. And secondly, they were based purely on inclination toward strength in the dark side. As Darth Bane once put it, the dark side of the force was like venom. The fewer vessels it was concentrated in, the more potent it became. To this end, Bane and his successors sought to recruit the strongest apprentices possible for maximum dark side potency. They were extremely selective in this process and usually looked for recruits that had obvious natural talent. As a result, they discriminated between species in the recruiting process for much the same reason that the Jedi did. They avoided species that, as a whole, were inclined away from the dark side of the Force. On a basic level, Sith Masters looked for extreme selfishness and ambition, the foundational traits of Darksiders, as well as deep-rooted anger and hatred. They sought as apprentices those who would never be satisfied with what they had, who would never let a concern for life or other beings get in their way, and who would never falter in their quest for power. Some species were naturally inclined toward this way of thinking, like Sith Purebloods and the ancient Rakata. Most were not, but were able to be swayed toward it. Human, for example, usually had a predominant natural inclination for cooperation with their communities, but could be swayed over to a more Sithy way of thinking without too much effort. Some species had stronger communal instincts than humans, however, which got in the way of the dark side. Consider for example, the Keldors. As a whole, the Keldors had a natural inclination to the light side due to their strong senses of justice and their cultural emphasis on selfless acts. This inclination was strong enough that the Keldor's own order of four sensitives, the Barando Sages, had been exclusively light siders from the very beginning. As a result, the Sith rarely, if ever, recruited Keldors, and modern Sith generally avoided them and other species like them. This rule wasn't absolute, and over the millennia, there were probably some Keldors that abandoned the ways of their people and fell to the dark side. They were, however, exceedingly rare. There are known cases of Syrians that joined the Sith, but they were also rare, and for good reason. The native species of heartless scumbag Kyari Mundi were, by nature, calm, peaceful, and rational. Their culture placed a strong emphasis on living in harmony with nature, and most Syrians were born with an innate respect for life. These traits were not all conducive to the dark side, 
which relied upon the user having fierce, unbridled passions to turn into power. They weren't completely closed off to the dark side of course, and some even claimed that Serene's binary brains allowed them to practice both the light side and the dark side at once, though this was almost definitely a myth. However, they would not have made good Sith and the Order of the Sith Lords wouldn't have gone to Saria for recruits. Another example of a species with a natural temperament that wouldn't work well for the Sith was the Sluisi, our scriptwriter's favourite species. These snake-like sentients were renowned for their patience, sociability and their legendary ability to remain calm in virtually any circumstance. They seemingly didn't even feel anger at all something that would have precluded them from membership in the Sith. There were likely exceptions to this rule, but they would have been abnormalities in an otherwise thoroughly passive species. Even the more inclusive Sith Orders likely wouldn't have considered Sluisi for recruitment, and those Sith inclined to speciesism would have likely categorically hated them. A race that we can say the Sith almost definitely never recruited was the Kamasi. The Kamasi, one of the oldest and most respected species in the galaxy, were pacifists and had natural inclinations toward peace and social justice. They were natural lightsiders and in the galaxy at large, Kamasi were usually seen as diplomats, philosophers and envoys. In fact, they were actually partially responsible for shaping the ideology of the Jedi during the Order's early days. This strong inclination toward the light was due to an odd natural telepathic trait that allowed the Kamasi to share their memories with near relatives and force sensitives. Traumatic memories, like those related to acts of violence, were unbearable for Kamasi, especially force sensitive Kamasi. Thus, they would not have been good recruits for the Sith, who were known for their violent ways. The Athorians were a similar case. These gentle creatures were intensely communal and pacifistic, and they had a deep love for all forms of life. Their respect for living things was such that they would take care to avoid killing even plants and insects, and whenever they needed to harvest a plant, they would always plant two more of its kind to make up for it. Ithorians also had a high rate of force sensitivity. In fact, their societies were based around force sensitive shamans. These shamans always gravitated toward the light side however, due to their natural deep rooted respect for life. Obviously, this wasn't something the Sith were interested in. But not all of the species that the Sith would have ignored were nice and pacifist. Some might be a lot more unexpected, like the Kaminoans for example. Our least favourite eugenics dinos were generally scumbags to be sure, but that's not all that was required to be a Sith. It is true that the Kaminoans were ruthless and that their culture detested weakness just as much as the Sith did, but the Kaminoans had the same undesirable trait as the Sluisi did. They just didn't get angry all that much. Kaminoans expressed their emotions very rarely, and in general, they were pretty sociopathic. This may have made them excellent allies for the Sith, but it would not have made them good Sith in their own right as most Kaminoans lacked the necessary passion that fueled the power of the dark side. Force sensitivity was additionally rare on Kamino, which also wasn't an ideal trait for Sith recruits. Our last two species might seem shockingly familiar to some of you, the Geonosians and the Bilars. That's right, we're talking about the teddy bears from hell again. Like the Jedi, the Sith generally didn't recruit from hive-minded species, though not for the same reasons as the Jedi. The Sith absolutely detested the very concept of hive minds. After all, Sith were individualist in the extreme, and selfishness and individual ambition were the core traits of their ideology. Hive minded species generally weren't capable of developing the sort of traits necessary to be a good Sith, and thus, the Sith never recruited from them. Species like the Geonosians were still useful to them as allies, much like the Kaminoans, but again, they didn't make good Sith in their own right. So, that's our look at a few of the species that the Sith would have considered undesirable for recruiting. But what do you think? Do you want to watch a full video on the Bilars, the little demons that surely haunt the nightmares of bears everywhere? Let us know your thoughts and more in the comments section below.
And just before you go to scrub that bill up picture out of your mind, make sure you check out some of our links in the description below, including our new channel called The Braved, where we go through all different eras of history to find some of the most badass individuals and make an epic story with some sick edits that I'm sure you guys will all love. If you just want to listen to some music, check us out on Relax Jack, where we take a lot of the music from there and use it in these videos. And if you just want to join us in the wider community, check us out on our Discord and Geatsley's Gaming Network. Anyways, guys, as always, thank you so much for watching, and I hope to see you in the next video.